Welcome back to Technology. This is building your first neural network. So the first thing you want to do is install Ubuntu, or you can just download it on Windows. So there's pros and cons. But the first thing that you want to do if you want to build it with Linux is install Ubuntu. Then you're going to install Python and download Python. I do have a short version of this that I can put link to this video that will show you how to download Python. After you've downloaded Python, next thing you want to do is install PyTorch. Again, I'm going to do it with Windows, but if you want to install PyTorch with Ubuntu, these are the commands. You do sudo apt install python3 pip, then you're going to upgrade pip and then install PyTorch. To make sure that PyTorch is there, you're going to do pip show torch. Next. Let's go over some of the fundamentals of data science before we jump into PyTorch. So what this is, is this is an extension of some of the videos that we made in the past using data science with NumPy's and Jupyter Notebook. So as you can see on line 8, 9, and 10, what we did was we took the data that we had from our last model, the teams and the defense, and we made it into a tensor. One thing to note is that PyTorch and tensors are mainly for deep learning and neural networks, things like language recognition or image recognition. So it really does not apply to this model with working uh, with data, that's more with linear regression, and that doesn't apply to the model that we're doing, but it's something to note. Okay, so let's jump into our code. So to start, let me just say that Tensor and PyTorch is really used for neural networks and deep learning, things like name recognition, or I'm sorry, image recognition, voice recognition, things of that sense. So the model that we have in lines 8, 9, and 10 is really for our defensive statistic model that we made a couple weeks ago. I just did that so that you can get a sense of how data science applies in relation with tensors and PyTorch. So let's run the first 19 lines of code and see if we can do is let's make sure that PyTorch is installed. So we're going to do import torch. All right, it is installed. OK, so let's run our code. So we're going to do Python fantasy lineup dot pi. Something to make note, it does take some time to run in Windows. That is why I had mentioned at the beginning, if you would like to use Ubuntu, it does run faster. So what we have here is tensors that we create. PyTorch works in tensors. Basically what that is, is that's a basic operation that we need and it helps with a lot of things. For instance, we can create, uh, we convert NumPy arrays with PyTorch sensors and vice versa. So now let's jump to what we were actually doing. So what we're actually doing is like we were doing previously, and we have the error because I forgot to uncomment at the bottom and I will. So what we're doing is first we're running and creating our CSV. So we're going to run pd.readcsv like we've done in the past. We're going to then data.describe so that we can get an idea of what our CV is. First thing that we did was we created a NumPy for all, or sorry, we created a list for all of the quarterbacks that we listed. Then we're going to take the median. After we get the median, we're going to create a tensor for above 17.5. Reason why we're doing that is because we want to filter out any quarterbacks that had numbers or averages that were less. So then we're going to create a dictionary of those players that were above 17.5. After that, we create another tensor for those players and print out the average, or print out above average. Then we're going to plot, and, and I will print all this out so you'll see it in a minute. Then we're going to plot that data. So just like we've done in the past, we have x and y values. We're going to plot. We do plot.scatter x and y. 
and plot that show, we're going to get a scatter plot of values. But what we want to do is we want to take our data and we want to make it even more confined. So what we want to do is run our median again to get our elite quarterbacks. So we run the median and we find that it's 19.05. So that will eliminate a lot of players that, you know, were above average, but were not elite. We're going to do the same thing for pass catchers and the same thing for tight ends. Creating data frames for receivers as we do on line 93. We're creating a PD.data frame for our above average Y receivers. Then we're going to break that down and we're going to get our elite Y receivers and print that out. We do the same thing with tight ends, same thing with receivers. We do the same thing with running backs. So finally, after we've done all of that, now we get to the creation of our actual ultimate lineup. And again, I'm just zooming through this because this is just understanding the basics so that we can get to building models with PyTorch. So what we have is created a dictionary that has the elite quarterbacks. There's about five of them this season. This is all for DFS, by the way, PPR. Running backs. We have about four of them, and three tight ends and three receivers, and then print that out. So let's run that code. Oop. Let's get rid of that error. Now let's run the code again. Like I said, it will take a little bit of time to run. Okay, so. Here we go. So what we have here is first, like I went over, we have those data frames that we created, outlining the averages and the totals. We have the medians, another tensor, another data frame, and then we have our scatter plot. What our scatter plot does, it helps us to make decisions. So as you can see, our initial scatter plot, we see that our top quarterback is Allen at 24. So we see that elite is about 20 plus. So we want to go, if we're doing DFS, if we're picking an ultimate lineup, if we're going with the quarterback that we're choosing, you know, in the playoffs this season for DFS and for all of these other uh, fantasy football, you know, gambling, and, and, or, or not gambling, but just all these fantasy football sites, what we're seeing is – you're going to need to have a quarterback that's consistent that's about above 20 or more. Something to note is that Kirk Cousins is on this list, even though he was injured. Okay, so now we have our next scatter plot. Our next scatter plot is a little bit bigger because it's all of the elite players on a scatter plot. Something to make note, and this is why this does not really apply to a neural network, is because you can't really make even a linear regression line out of this data. Right? Basically, what a linear regression line would be is the line that determines you know, if our correlation is positive or negative and if our prediction is right. This really wouldn't help with that. This is more of just an analytical chart that will help us to make decisions. So as you can see, 24 is really the golden number for any players. And if you're going to want to pick elite players, they're going to be in the 20-plus range, as almost everyone, the exception of Purdy, Love, and Cousins, Porta, Kelsey, and Hawkinson, which again are tight ends and they're dependent, but everyone else is about 20 or more on the elite scale. Okay, so now that you have kind of an understanding of how data science works and how to build models to make decisions, let's now talk about PyTorch. So, like I mentioned before, PyTorch uses tensors, it's integrating data science, and is for deep learning language recognition, or image recognition. Some of the terms that we're going to use, one is epoch, that is the training of the neural network model or algorithm. We're going to initialize weights. We have loss, that's functions to gauge the error between prediction output and target value. We have gradient, which uses backward propagation. And backprop, this according to PyTorch documentation, the NN, or neural network, adjusts its parameters proportionate to the error in its guess. It does so by traversing backwards from the output, collecting the derivatives of the error with respect to the parameters of the function. 
and optimizing the parameters using gradient descent. For a more detailed walkthrough of Backprop, check out this video from 3 Blue 1 Brown. So basically what that means in layman's terms is imagine if you have the answer to a problem and you're working backwards from the answer to the problem. So maybe you're doing multiple choice and they're giving you the answer to the problem, but you have to determine how you got to that answer. And that is kind of backward proposition or backward propagation, I should say, on a simplified level. Now let's get into the code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build these neural networks for you instead of you seeing the results. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to CD into a new project. So the first thing that we're going to do in using auto gradient is we're going to use auto gradient for a NumPy array. So first let's import the dependencies that we need. And we've done a lot of arrays like we did, like we were just shown, but we know how to use arrays. You're going to also import torch. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to set the weights equal to torch.1. So that we implement the equations to calculate the model, prediction, the loss function, so that we do a numerical computation of the gradients and implement the formula correctly. So let's begin. So you want to set the weights. And like I mentioned previously, this is going to be for MP arrays or NumPy arrays. Then you're going to set the type as a float32. And you do the same thing for y. Then you're going to set the w equals to 0, 0.0. That's going to be very important when we get to tensors. Next, we're going to create our forward function. Again, we're using backward, propag backward propagation. Next, we're going to create our loss function. And our dependency is going to be y and then our y predicted. And we're going to return y predicted minus y. We're going to square it and then we're going to take the mean like we did previously. For our other algorithm, we're going to work with mean as well here. Next, let's create the gradient function. And again, we're going to put y predict again, subtract that by y. And we're going to print our prediction. Make sure to use the F syntax once you're working with the prediction. It's very important.
Yeah, so what it's called is an F string. So this prediction before training. So we're going to say that our value 5, which should be 10. Here we do this with our F string. And that's what we're doing here. Now let's do our training. And this is very important. You want to set your learning rate. This is really the crux of machine learning, is the learning rate and the number of iterations. I'm going to set the iterations high because when the iterations is high, now your model will run more and more and more and your loss mitigates because of it. Now let's create our training loop. Like I mentioned earlier, we're doing our epic. Basically what that is, is it's just a neural network iteration. Well, to be specific, it is the training algorithm. We're going to call the number of iterations. We're going to call the X from above. We're going to set loss. for both our X and our Y, and then obviously our prediction as well. We're going to set our weight equal to our gradient. This is very important because as we get to working with tensors instead of numpies, we're actually not going to use that. We're going to use a different, but we'll get to that. We're going to set W to minus equals our learning rate times our weight. We're going to run an if statement for the epoch. Again, we're going to run another F string. Python's very case sensitive, so you have to be careful with errors. But remember that we're going to sell our print statements to F strings. I'm going to set our epic to epic plus one. And then we're going to set point. 3F like we did above for our gradient. So let's run it. And I want you to notice something. Notice how the loss is zero. If we were to run it for 10 iterations, Loss is at 0 0.0000001 at 13 epics. So 
with this, we could have been safe running 15 or 20, but it's always good to have more than less because that's the way the model can be the most efficient. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our same model and we're going to integrate it with tensors instead of MP array. Okay, so with tensors, let's look at some of the differences. So obviously, one difference is that we imported torch. And for our NumPy array, we're doing torch.tensor instead. So that's where we have x, y, and even w is torch.tensor. We're still going to do that requires grad equals true. Some other differences. Notice how we don't have a gradient function. And also, our dot float. That's now a torch module. So we had mp.torch. Now we're running with torch.nograd. What that does is it helps especially with the dw that we set or the weights we set earlier. That's going to be w.grad. So that was another difference. Again, we're going to set our iterators to 100. The more iterations we run, the more efficient our model is. Well, those are really the major differences. And then again, for our gradient, we run L.backward. Because as I mentioned before, we're doing backward propagation. And in backward propagation, the NN adjusts its parameters proportionate to the error and its guess. So that's why we have the L.backward. The forward, like same thing with backward propagation, is for the prediction. So let's run that. So we're going to run Python tensor and n.py and see what we get. And just like before, the only difference is that our epochs run in 10 instead of our epochs running 1 to 100 like before. But again, we still see that after our 51st epoch, or sorry, after our 61st epoch, our errors were, our loss was at zero. So to conclude, some of the big things to note, number one, like I've been saying, for the training loop, let's start there, here for the training loop, the forward pass is still going to be the same. The gradient will now be equal to the backward pass. Second, the biggest thing to know is that if you increase the number of iterators, it will help to mitigate the number of loss and now make your model more efficient. And that is how we run our first neural network. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button.